What if I told you that the fruit many Jamaicans eat for breakfast every day also happens to be one of the most poisonous fruits in the world? This is Aki. If you don't prepare it carefully, eating Aki can lead to dehydration, seizures, and in severe cases, coma and even death. So why would anyone take the risk to eat it? Because Aki is one of the most exquisitely delicious foods you'll ever try. In this video, we'll learn about the history of the Aki fruit, how it came to be such a staple of Jamaican cuisine, the proper way to prepare the fruit so that it's safe to eat, and how to make Aki and saltfish, the national dish of Jamaica. So keep watching. Welcome back to Top Life Family. My name is Carmen Sanyovi. Our family first visited Jamaica back in 2017, and during that trip, I tried Aki and saltfish for the very first time and absolutely fell in love with the dish. But I had no idea then that Aki is actually one of the most poisonous fruits in the world. When we returned to Jamaica this year, I wanted to find out more about the fruit's history and its importance to Jamaican culture, so I sat down with Chef Sherman Gordon of the resort Moon Palace, Jamaica. I first asked Chef Gordon to describe what cooked Aki looks and tastes like. Well, it looks, it looks like a scrambled egg, I could say. Yeah. When it's done, it looks like a scrambled egg. Very creamy, some creamy in the tongue. <laughs> it's it's a, a very hard to explain, but it is a really... The flavor is always creamy and nice. What it is, I know. I'm trying to figure what it tastes like. I can't think of anything. It's yeah, a, it's a, it has a very yeah. unique feel, flavor, you say. Yeah. Very unique flavor. Aki is part of the soap berry family, which means that it's related to fruits like the lychee, the rambutan, and the longan, or dragon eye fruit. Historical records suggest that Aki came to Jamaica from Ghana, and it was most likely transported via slave ship in 1778. Though the Aki fruit is native to West Africa, it's cultivated there mostly for non-food uses, everything from making soup to making ointment for treating headaches and ulcers. Jamaica is probably the only country in the world where Aki has become an integral part of the national cuisine. Most Jamaican from early days, um, for a child, you have a lot of haggy tree in the backyard, so you can pick all you want. I always say before, we eat it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, you name it. So it's, it's there. Right? So it's very, very, it's a very, play a very, very important part of our, of our culture. But eating aki is inherently a dangerous pursuit. Before it becomes ripe, the fleshy, edible part of the fruit contains high levels of the toxin hypoglycin. If you consume this toxin, it can lead to an acute illness known as Jamaican vomiting sickness, which is exactly as nasty as it sounds. It can cause profuse vomiting, altered mental status, seizures, and hypothermia. If left untreated, it could result in coma or even death. As the aki fruit ripens, the levels of hypoglycin in the fleshy edible parts drop dramatically, making it safe to eat. But even in ripe fruit, dangerous levels of the toxin can be found in the seeds and the rind, so it still has to be cleaned and processed extremely carefully. As a child growing up, we know that it has to open first. Let it ripe on a tree and opens. Once it's open, they'll be cleaned properly and the whole process. So all of us Jamaican, Jamaican young, young lad, young, young people, we know from early how to take care of the hockey. Can we take this out? Take this out. Are we, are we take the seed, seed off like that. Then what we do? Anything at all inside like this, we take it out. All the red se sections, uh. take it out. Also take out any black section on it. So. Uh. And this now is cooking this in the salt the water. Now, our family lives in New York City, where there's a huge Jamaican population, which means that we're lucky enough to have easy access to some amazing Jamaican food. It puzzled me, though, that Aki and saltfish was the national dish of Jamaica, and yet we've never been to a Jamaican restaurant in New York that served it. Well, it turns out that's because it's almost impossible to get Aki here. The importation of any type of Aki into the United States was banned by the FDA in 1973 because of its dangerous toxins. Finally, in 2000, several companies were given permission to sell frozen and canned Aki here. But to this day, it's illegal to import raw Aki fruit into the US. In Jamaica, on the other hand, Aki is one of the most plentiful foods in the country. In almost our backyard, we have Aki trees. It grow wild, actually. It grow wild in the bushes all over the place. So we can, we, we can we have access to it at all times. Yeah, the, the blooms all year round. Um, what you find in the summertime, you get more of it. Right? But it blooms all year round. There's never um, a season that you don't have Aki. By the way, if you're new to this channel, we're the Sinyovi family and we're all about inspiring families to explore the world together in comfort and style. We share tips on how you can save time, reduce hassle, and maximize comfort when you travel with kids. If that sounds good to you, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next video. 
As I mentioned earlier, ackee was introduced to Jamaica because of the transatlantic slave trade, and the dish ackee and saltfish is also inextricably linked to the country's history of enslavement. As Jamaica became the world's largest producer of sugar in the 17th and 18th centuries, European plantation owners needed enough food to sustain the huge number of enslaved Africans who worked the fields. They eventually realized that salt cod, imported from New England, was the perfect solution since it was a cheap protein that could survive long trips across the Atlantic without spoiling. No one knows for sure exactly how or when ackee and saltfish came to be paired together, but the dish soon became a staple in Jamaica, and to this day it's a dish that many Jamaican families eat for breakfast on a daily basis. Either way, ackee and saltfish with some fried dumpling, which I'll have you try later on. What I've done right now in the back, some fried plantain, some and fried dumpling is coming out also. So you get a sample of what it's done at home. And then it was time to cook. Chef Sherman heated up some vegetable oil, then sauteed onions, bell peppers, tomatoes, scallions, and salted codfish. He added some scotch bonnet pepper, which is a variety of chili pepper that features prominently in a lot of Jamaican cuisine. And he added some fresh thyme. And finally, the ackee went in last since it's pre-boiled and very soft. It stayed in the pan for just a few minutes before the dish was ready to be plated. Chef Gordon served the ackee and saltfish with fried dumplings and plantains, and our family enjoyed every last bite. And you love it. Once you want to start eating it, you'll never stop. <laughs> I can adjust to that. Yeah, start eating that, you'll never stop. Yeah. Okay, if you'd like to see the full vlog from our stay at Moon Palace, Jamaica, including the delicious breakfast buffet that features ackee and saltfish every single day, just click that video right there. If you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications, and follow us on TikTok and Instagram at Top Flight Family. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.